Good morning everyone, my name is Evan and I'm one of the church wardens here at St Mary's Magdalene's Church and I'll be leading us in our service today. So I'd just like to start our service with a word of scripture which is taken from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. It says, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Which I think is quite helpful and encouraging for what's happening in our lives today as we're still under another week of lockdown and restrictions because of the coronavirus. But I'm sure we're all keeping well, keeping safe and enjoying the nice smelling London air now that there's no traffic going around. So anyway, let's start our service. The Lord be with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen because he is risen indeed. So our order of service today will be um, worship led by Maddie, um, our Bible readings, a talk by Charlie, and then I'll finish by saying a quick prayer for us all and sending us all on our way. So I'd like us to prepare for today's service um, by confessing our sins and things that we've done wrong because sometimes um, we don't think to do this, you know, we just go about our daily lives, living each day as it comes. But it is important to remember when we've done something wrong and if we're not prepared to ask that person for their forgiveness, then we should go to God. So let's bow our heads. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sins and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you and we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now that we've repented of our sins, it's God that fills our lungs with his breath. So let us use that breath to give him our songs of worship, which is led by Maddie. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, all oh my soul. 
Just. 
Bible readings. First reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. The living stone and a chosen people. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'll be reading from John 21, verse 15 to 19. Jesus and Peter. 
When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he, he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus then said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands for another, and they will dress you and carry you wherever you would not want to go. Um, and after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. Thank you, Philip and Friday. Before Charlie comes and talks to us, about confidence in our identity, I would just like to say a quick prayer for him. Heavenly Father, we give you the gift of Charlie, and thank you, Father, that you've sent us into our church to be the, our shepherd, um, because we are your sheep. We pray, Father God, that his words will inspire us, will open our hearts and minds to a new understanding and a new love of you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, my name is Charlie Moore and I'm the Rector of St Mary's Bermondsey. Now of course I haven't always been the Rector and I will not be the Rector in the future. Uh, in fact, being the Rector of this church does not define who I am. Uh, it, my identity is, is not necessarily linked to being a Vicar in the Church of England. Um, because I am first and foremost, of course, a Christian like you. And uh, of course, our identity is not defined by the job that we do necessarily. And uh, on the screen now, you can see some pictures of myself uh, when I was a student uh, over a number of years in Dundee in Scotland and also in some other contexts. Um, of course, identity cards are something that all of us use at different times in our lives, uh, in different workplaces. They're used for security reasons and uh, you know, we have to show them at different times. Uh, identity cards change and we change. Uh, but of course, our identity is not defined uh, by, by our job or our changing job or what we do. Um, or where we live, um, our, our identity is truly found in, in God through Jesus Christ. But this is a question, of course, which is, um, has, raised, has been raised by um, the closure of workplaces and by uh, the closure of churches over the last few weeks, because we realise actually how much um, we do associate who we are with what we do. And uh, it can create quite a lot of insecurity, as I've mentioned before. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like the picture that's on the screen now, uh, where the ground seems to be shifting from underneath our feet. And just as we think we're getting onto solid ground, then it shifts again. And as you see the series of pictures moving through the different uh, angles on the screen, you can see that um, there's a, our, our, our our, our orientation changes and it can be quite unsettling as the ground moves. A few weeks ago we had uh, a, a picture on the screen which was an illustration of Jesus being in the boat with his disciples and how Jesus was totally secure in his identity uh, as he lay in the back of the boat and just slept as his disciples became more and more agitated about the storm that was blowing up. And so I'd like us to join together now in the, screen, in the prayer that's going to be on the screen uh, in front of that picture. God of stillness, God of the storm, you are greater than our plans and more powerful than our attempts to control our lives. Guide us through life's uncertainties, calm us in times of tempest, 
Shake us in our complacency. Teach us to know that you alone are God. There will of course be uh, shifting sands and stormy seas in life. But a moment ago we, we sang this song, Cornerstone. And that song begins with these words. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less. It's a song, of course, based on the reading that we've had this morning, uh, which is from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2. And in verse Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 5, it says this, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, the living stone and the living stones that are built into a spiritual house. It begins with a description of a building and that passage ends with the picture of a people, the people of God. The church, of course, is not a building, it is a people. And as Robin said in his sermon last week, many people have been brought to their knees by this, the present crisis. But as Christians, if we have been brought to our knees, it can be with confidence in our Saviour Jesus Christ, to whom we come and through whom we become living stones. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, it says this, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And the question for us, of course, is what are we building our lives on? What is the basis, what is the foundation of our lives. A moment ago I showed you uh, some a PowerPoint slide of, 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 of various ID cards that I've had in my life which of course as I said earlier don't define who I am who on whom on those roles I do not base my identity. Our identity is based on what, who God has created us to be. We are each born with a unique DNA, if you like, a unique ID. Uh, we're known by God, God who has a good plan and purpose for our lives. And on the screen now you can see uh, an example of that, just the different people that you see on that slide, in a slightly humorous way, of course. But each one of them looks different because each one is unique, just as you and I are unique. And I think that's something I didn't really realize, I didn't understand fully. When as a first year student, I went to university uh, up in Dundee in Scotland, many years ago, I might say now. Um, uh, when I went there, I went full of confidence uh, I, uh, I had a lot of confidence about the future. But at the end of, of three years or so, I was not so confident. I was, uh, did not have the same hope. I had put my trust in a lot of other things and they'd been found wanting. I knew that my identity couldn't be based on 
who I was then or what I was going to be in the future. And it was a while before I realized that my identity could only be found in God through Jesus Christ. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, it says this. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. In a sort of ironic way, in a strange way, the, the very stone, the living stone, is the one over which we might trip. What it's really saying to us is that what we choose to disobey is also what we're dis destined for in our lives. Our true destiny lies in putting our trust in Jesus Christ. Our true DNA is found in the person that God created us to be, in union with God, living for his purposes in this world. And so what we choose to disobey is also what we're destined for. It's rather like Peter himself, who in John chapter 21, which Friday read for us earlier, having denied Jesus three times, is then given the choice three times to follow Jesus again. Peter was the person that wrote this book, the, the books of Peter and the epistles of Peter, but also the person who, like you and me, is, was a human being with many feelings. And yet he experienced the grace of Jesus uh, as he met him on the seashore after they'd had breakfast in that very human way. They ate together and then Jesus had a really honest conversation with him. And Jesus wants to have an honest conversation with us too. Uh, he wants to challenge us today about are we going to place uh, our, our faith in him? Are we going to build on the living stone or are we going to trip over it and into the rest of our lives without him? And so as I come to the end of this, this short talk, um, I, I want to just again say that we can have confidence in, a, in this world of complexity. We can have confidence in the good news of Jesus Christ. We can have confidence in a God who has got a good plan and purpose for our lives. Yes, we carry ID cards, but the ID card that we carry as Christians, as God's people, is the one that we carry into the rest of our lives that we carry with us in whatever we do, wherever we go. Uh, it's, it's, it, it is our true identity. Our true identity is found in Jesus Christ. And I'd like to just uh, conclude what I say now by reading the last few verses of our reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And as I come now to the end of my talk, uh, we're going to show some slides uh, just of some of activities of our, uh, our family at St. Mary's over the last few years. And I want you to see, look at these slides uh, as you listen to the music um, and, and, and just look at them and be reminded of who you are as the people of God. That we are a chosen people, a people that 
God has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. light. We are a people who, have, who are changing, who are continuing to change as we build our lives on the living stone, and that is Jesus Christ. And as the music plays, allow God to speak to you by his spirit. Be open to, to him uh, uh, as he perhaps wants you to put your faith in him in a way that you've never done before, to take steps of faith, uh, to live your life, to carry your card, your identity card, as a child of God, as a person who's been made by God for his purposes, to fulfill his plan on, in this world, on this earth. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your family here at St. Mary's. We thank you for the generations who have lived and worshipped here uh, in the past. And we thank you for all those who are part of this Christian community now. And we ask for your blessing to be upon us as we continue to meet in your name. Amen. And now I just want to remind you of uh, things that are happening this week, uh, which will of course be on the website and also uh, on the WhatsApp groups during the week. Uh, on Tuesday evening, we have the Bible study, which is uh, on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. And on Wednesday, we have the Alpha group, which meets at 7 p.m. on Zoom uh, to listen to the talk and then for a discussion afterwards. Also, as many of you, uh, well, as all of you know, uh, we haven't been able to meet over the last few weeks. Uh, and uh, obviously we still have um, uh, expenses here at the church. And because of not meeting, we haven't been able to have Sunday collections. Uh, and also people haven't been able to give perhaps by their envelopes. And so we would just like to encourage you uh, to give generously via our website. And also, uh, in a moment, the, on the screen there will be a slide which has our bank details uh, so that you can give online. Uh, we really uh, just appreciate your support in this way. And uh, thank you uh, for being with us today. Thank you. Now before we go, I'd like us all to say the grace together. I'm sure we all know the grace, don't we? So let's say this together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, as you go and begin the rest of this day, think about your neighbours, your friends and your family. Keep them all in your heart knowing that God, that you are in God's heart. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week.
bye.